as they check it all out. We understand they revert the scoring back one lap after a rain stoppage, so here is the finishing order. Carlos Reutemann for the win, second place going to Jacques Lafitte, and third to Nigel Mansell. Well, it's been interesting here in Belgium, it's also been tragic. And we're going to go right back now to Phil Hill in the Fast Company studio. Let's move away from the closed track events for a moment and go to a type of racing that almost anyone can identify with. If you've ever been in a place like Mexico City or Buenos Aires or Rio or someplace like that where they drive like mad all the time and um, if you've got to get to a restaurant that's going to close in five minutes and you're tearing through the city streets, don't know where you're going and someone in the car sort of does and is giving you instructions, shouting and all this, that might give you a tiny taste of what rallying is really about. We're going to the state of Washington for the Olympus Rally. There, modified streetcars will thrash their way through the Weyerhaeuser Forest at speeds up to 130 miles an hour. Here's Fast Company's Bill Wood to tell us all about it. Performance rallying is the motorized equivalent of downhill skiing. Its roots go back to the days before speedways and closed race courses. That's when informal challenges were presented driver to driver on back roads and country lanes, sort of motorized shootouts. The challenge is to power a specially prepared car over roads not constructed and maintained for racing, or for that matter, even normal automotive travel. The performance rallyist is racing other rallyists and the clock on roads he's never seen before. The driver-co-driver team may rally all night long, covering hundreds of miles, traveling as fast as they can, but never knowing what's around the next curve or over the next hill. They prepare for and cope with the unexpected. The sport is like no other motorsport activity you've ever experienced or seen. It's far removed from the milder time, speed, distance, navigational rallies you may have tried. This is professional racing. But instead of a sterile racetrack, the rallyist competes on everyday roads, roads that would destroy the average race car. This is beautiful downtown Brooklyn, Washington. It's a long way from Brooklyn, New York. In fact, it's a long way from most everywhere in the heart of the Weyerhaeuser Forest. It's also part of the surroundings of the 15th annual Olympus Rally part of the 14-event Sports Car Club of America National Championship Pro Rally Series. Because of that 15-year tradition, Olympus is one of the best motorsports events in the country. From Brooklyn, let's go back to rally headquarters in Tumwater, Washington. This year's Olympus Rally assembled 42 teams from all over America, parts of Canada, Peru, and New Zealand. Rod Millen in car number one is the three-time New Zealand Rally Champion who came to the United States two years ago looking for recognition on the international rally circuit. He won last year's Olympus Rally and is the favorite to win again this year. He's also expected to become the 1981 U.S. Rally Champion. So... I've learned so much in the last two years of all these different conditions we, we have to prepare the car for, that I have to prepare myself for to drive them. Um, to me, it's, it's a fantastic place to rally this country, um, and you learn very quickly. We asked Rod to describe what it takes to make a rally car. Well, a rally car starts as a standard showroom stock car. It's modified in all the suspension points, normally produces twice the horsepower it came out with, you know, in the region of up to 200 horsepower, sometimes more. Uh, the suspension points on that are all strengthened up to take the punishment we're likely to encounter on the roads. We have a lot of safety equipment inside the car. We have a full bar inside the car in case we do roll over, so there is protection for the navigator and the driver. We wear fireproof driving suits, crash helmets. Inside the car is also fire extinguishers and first aid kits in case, you know, we are prepared for the worst. Rod's co-driver is Bob Crashour, a former driver from Oregon who's just getting used to the co-driver's seat. I think I have a lot more respect for the co-drivers now. Uh, we're going so much faster than I ever imagined we could go that uh, things happen very quickly. Uh, just the, the, light, the slightest hesitation on my part, and uh, all of a sudden we lose the stage to John Buffum. Yeah, it's just that, that close. John Buffum is the four-time defending U.S. Rally King who's spending this season breaking in a new car. Gone into this year as, as a learning year. I've never driven a front-wheel drive car before. The car is not a 
as ultra competitive as cars I've had before. Um, but then again, uh, this is we're not going after the championship this year, and um, we're sort of waiting and seeing and, and hoping for next year. This ceremonial start to Olympus allows the teams to move orderly to where the real racing begins. The heart of the rally is the special stage. Special stages are stretches of public or private roads temporarily closed to normal traffic. The driver must cover these roads as fast as possible. The cars are counted down at the start controls, leaving at precise intervals and running against the clock. The driver's elapsed time is this score on the basis of 100 points per minute. At the end of the stage is a finish control, where his time is officially noted and this is the conclusion of the speed section. To get to the next stage, competitors travel at a normal rate on a regular road through what is known as a transit section. These are timed to the minute. Being late or early at the next control could mean more penalties. Servicing the cars is permitted at certain locations with time allowed for minor repairs or adjustments. Take too much time and you're in trouble. The penalty clock keeps on ticking. Periodic service breaks generally divide a rally into sections when the rally teams can check their cars, each other, and the scoring. At Olympus, their common enemy was tire wear. The forest logging roads were chopping through tires every other stage. The first section, by the way, found four-time Canadian rally champion Taisto Heinonen in front of Millen by about 10 seconds. We're going to press a little harder, um, but at the same time, we're still only about a quarter of the way through the event, so there's plenty, to, plenty of time to sort it out yet. Uh, you might back off a little bit and cool it and play it play it in so you get to the finish with the correct number of tires. The other possibility is to go for it, see what happens, and maybe at the end of the event the, the enough people will, will have dropped out that you don't need to go so fast. Two different philosophies. What's going to be yours? We'll go for it. As the rally moved into the afternoon hours, Millen and Crash Hour took command winning the next five stages. But it wasn't a cakewalk. On each stage, Heinonen was only a few hundreds back. American champion Buffum was still learning his new car, but getting faster and moving up to challenge the leaders. Fast Company will be right back with the conclusion to the Olympus Rally. As of now, you can fly with the Eagles, because now Goodyear has tamed their racing Eagles for the streets as a new line of high-performance radios. Eagle NCT, our ultimate performance radio. Eagle GT, already chosen as the optional radio on the 1981 Corvette. Eagle ST, with performance that belies its price. The Eagles, tamed for the streets, but far from tame. Just before dark, the full day of rallying started catching up with the front-running Heinonen team. If we get up there in time, we're running against maximum lateness here. If we get in there in time, we will still be in second place and we'll still go for the win. Taisto and co-driver Tom Burgess just made it. They resumed their toward pace, but now found another challenger for the lead, Jean-Paul Perouse, a French-Canadian who was driving the big V6 Peugeot built for competition in Africa. John Paul in one stages 11 and 12 over Millen and Heinonen to put him fourth overall after the second section behind Millen, Heinonen, and Buffum. Um, we've, we've eased off just a touch. Not much, though. Things can change very easily right, in the last few stages. Well, there's some dust out there, but people seem to be spacing themselves a little bit. doesn't seem to be too bad. Buffum's times are gone because he pulled out. But apparently he's very close to John Paul. I've got John Paul to stand him up here. Probably how we're doing against him. Darkness adds a different problem for rallyists. Following headlights down a dirt road through trees is like diving into a long tunnel. It seems like everything is closing in on you. But 12 hours later, as 29 wearied survivors made it back to Tumwater, Olympus had a victor. Rod Millen and Bob Prashauer had conquered the roads of the Weyerhaeuser Forest despite sacrificing 30 tires along the way. Just over three minutes back were the Canadian champions Heinonen and Burgess with co-driver Doug Shepard driving an exhausted Buffum home in third place. A rallyist crazier just developing the art of driving to near perfection. 
Artistry is achieved by performing a task smoothly, gracefully, and effortlessly. Rally driving is an art demanding total concentration and requiring instant evaluation of every nuance in the road ahead. Vehicle balance, braking ability, and engine efficiency. These are the most critical ingredients inevitably benefiting the everyday motorist. Rallying is the ultimate proving ground for man and machine. Race drivers usually make the worst passengers. For this reason, I really respect the navigators. It takes a lot of guts. As for myself, I'd prefer to be behind the wheel. One of the most thrilling and dangerous forms of motor racing today is the hydroplane boat drags, a sport that's a marriage of extreme skill and bravery. Today at Lake Ming in Bakersfield, California, veteran driver Frank Dade is out to set a new world's record with his blown fuel boat, Smoke on the Water. He will need to beat the current record of 203 and a half miles per hour. We all hope that the boat's name is not indicative of the outcome of the race. Fast Company's cameras are standing by at Lake Ming to bring you the Western Regional Championship boat drags. Let's join them now. Well, on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, with over 17,000 people cramming the shoreline, we're ready with some NDBA drag racing. And with me is John Ridgely. And John, the first few rounds here are not going to really matter, are they? Bruce, these are the slower classes going out right now. What we have here is a high point for the lead, John Paul Perouse, another Canadian who was driving the big V6 Peugeot built for a competition in Africa. John Paul won stages 11 and 12 over Millen and Heinonen to put him fourth overall after the second section behind Millen, Heinonen, and defending champion John Buffett. Um, we've, we've eased off just a touch. Not much, though. Things can change very easily right, in the last few stages. Well, there's some dust out there, but people seem to be spacing themselves a little bit. It doesn't seem to be too bad. Buckwood's times are gone because he pulled out. But apparently he's very close to John Paul. I've got John Paul on the stand up here. Probably what we're doing against him. Uh, do we have a cup? Change front tires? No, I don't think so. Darkness adds a different problem for rallyists. Following headlights down a dirt road at speed is like diving into a long tunnel. Seems like everything is closing in on you. Coupled with the darkness, drivers had to fight dense dust at Olympus, something new to the rainforest of Washington. <laughs> 